In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make an animated vote widget using Flinto's Behavior Designer. When you click it, it expands open, and then when you tap either of the up or down arrows, it has a nice animation to it. So let's get right into the tutorial. Okay, the first thing I need to do is draw a rectangle. So I press R, click and drag to draw the rectangle, and now I want to put a text label in the middle of it. So I'll press T to activate the text tool and type the word vote. Now with both of those layers selected, I'm going to click the vertical align and the horizontal align buttons to make sure that the label is centered on top of the rectangle. Now I'll put both of those into the middle of the screen and select the rectangle that's the background. And while holding option, I'll scale it down until it feels like a comfortable size. And then with that background layer selected, I'll change its fill color to white. Now I'm going to hold Z and click to zoom in because I'm going to draw a little arrow here and I want to see it a bit better. So I'm going to draw a vector path. Press V on your keyboard to activate the vector shape tool. And I'm going to draw these three points to make the triangle top part of the arrow. I'm going to turn off the fill and turn on the border and set the border width to two and choose a nice green color for this. Now I'll press V again to activate the vector tool again and just draw a straight line coming down from the top of the arrow. Now to get the same style on both of these lines, I'm going to select the one that I've already styled and press Command Option C, which is the shortcut for Copy Style. Then I'll select the new line that I just drew and press Command Option V, which will paste that style onto it. Now I'll hold Shift and click each layer to select both of them and then press Command G to group them. So now I have a group with my arrow in it. I'm going to hold Option and drag that group to create a duplicate of it. And then I want to turn it red. So I'm going to hold Command, which allows me to click into a group and I'm going to hold Command and Shift so that I can select multiple layers within the group, select both of these lines, and change them to a red border. Now I've got both my arrows. I'm going to put the red one over on the right. And what I like to do is start by putting it against the right edge, and then hold Shift and press left arrow three times, and then I know it's moved exactly 30 points from the right edge. And then I can repeat that with the other arrow, put it against the left edge, Shift, right arrow three times, and now I know that they're both positioned the same distance from the edge. Okay, I've accidentally moved the background layer, which I don't want to do, so I'm going to lock this layer by clicking the little lock icon in the layer list. Next, I'm going to select all the layers that make up my widget here, and I'm going to put them in a group. So I'll use the Command G shortcut to put them in a group, and I'm going to name this group Clip, because I'm going to turn on the Clip option under Group Options in the Inspector. I'm also going to set a radius of five, and you'll see that that rounds the corners of it. And what I can do now is select that clip group and hold option and scale from the side to bring this in a bit, and you'll see that it clips off the content. So this will be the default appearance of my vote widget where you can't see the arrows. Now I'm ready to start creating the behavior, but what I wanna do first is create a group around the clip group because I'd like to animate the properties of the clip group in the behavior. So I need an additional group that goes around it. So I'm clicking group in the toolbar, and this new group I'll name Vote Widget. Then I'll click Behavior to add a behavior to that group. And in the Behavior Designer, I'll start by creating a new state. And on the new state, I'm going to expand this. So I'll select the clip group and hold Option and resize it so that it's wider and it will snap to the edge of the background layer. I'm also gonna move these arrows back out away from the center by 10 points. So that'll create a nice animation where the arrows animate out as the layer expands. I'll go back to the initial state and create a link across the whole thing by pressing D to draw a link, click and drag to make the link shape, and then I'll target the new state. And from the new state, I wanna have that exact same link shape. So I'll go to the initial state, select the link, press Command C to copy it, go back to the new state and press Command V to paste it in. Now if I open the preview, I can test this out. Tapping from the initial state takes me to the new state, and tapping there takes me back to the initial state. And it's got that nice expanding arrow effect, which looks really cool. Now let's take this a little further. On the new state, I'm going to press D, and then draw a link over the green arrow. And I'll directly target this plus button. That allows me to target and create a new state at the same time. I'm going to change the gesture to button press. Remember, this is the new gesture that allows you to press down and it automatically comes back to the state that you started on. I'm gonna name this new state up active because this represents when I've tapped down on the up arrow. And I'll rename the other state as well. So in the up active state, I'm gonna rotate this whole thing. 
To rotate the group, hold Command while hovering over one of the corner handles. So I'll rotate this down a bit so that the up arrow is moved up a little bit. Let's try that out in the preview. So now I can tap down on the arrow and it moves up. I'm gonna do the same thing for the other side. Draw a link over the down arrow, target the new state button, use the button press gesture, and I'll name this one down active, and rotate it so that the arrow goes down, and slide this down a little bit. Okay, let's test that out. Cool, so now both of these work, and uh, let's play around with this and take it a little bit further. I'm gonna rotate around the Y axis so that when you tap the red arrow, it appears that you're pushing the whole thing around uh, in 3D. And I'll do the same thing for up active and rotate it in the other direction. So let's try that. It's got a fun 3D effect now. Now let me try something else. I'm gonna move the red arrow down in the down active state and the green arrow up in the up active state. And uh, how about if I fade out the opposing arrow in the up active and down active states? Let's see how that looks in the preview. So here's my final widget, and I've added a lot of extra little animations to it. You know, maybe I took it a little too far, but it's fun to experiment with these things and the behavior designer makes it easy. You should try creating your own version and uh, maybe be a little more subtle and see how elegant of an effect you can achieve.